Morning, Dwayne. I'm joined by Dwayne Killings uh, from University of Albany in his first season as, as head coach. Uh, Dwayne, just talk about uh, your team's excitement and what your preparation has been like uh, heading into the to the season. Yeah, it's been great. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm very honored to be you know the new head men's basketball coach here at U Albany. Um, you know, I, I think this is a special place. I think there's a great interest in our program, you know, what we've been able to accomplish in the community. You know, one of my goals when we first got here was, you know, to build a program and put together a team um, that can win the conference, obviously, but then also put together a program um, and have players that are mindful of their opportunity to impact the community and, you know, try to really provide a rewarding opportunity for people to come into the SEFQ arena and, and cheer for a group of guys that are representing the community and, and the campus body and all those that came before them um, the right way. And I'm hoping that what we're trying to do here is with the excitement um, that people have right now in the capital region for our program, you know, my anticipation is that there's going to be a lot of people inside that arena cheering us on because we have a talented group. You now we have a lot of work to do. Um, I obviously, you know, noticed the, the seventh place um, recognition. I think it creates a great opportunity uh, to showcase who we are and what we're made of. And, and we have a lot to prove, obviously. Please utilize the, the raise hand function uh, or physically raise your hand uh, if you have a question. Uh, Abby? Hey, Coach. Um, I was just wondering if you could uh, give me a re reaction to the seventh place ranking place ranking and uh, does that light a little more of a fire in your belly going into the uh, conference schedule? Uh, I don't need motivation to get to get our program or our, ourselves ready to compete. I mean, that's why we're doing it. Um, but I do think that it tells me and it also tells our guys we have a lot to prove, as I mentioned. Um, you know, we've taken you look at a guy like Trey Perry. I think he's poised to have a really good season for us. But he's now in a different position here than he was at Temple University. And I could say the same for Matt Zerudi and Paul Newman. So there's a little bit of an unknown, um, which is still a great opportunity for these guys because they came here because they want to prove, you know, who they are and what they can do for themselves. And that's something that we talk about all the time here. Um, I think for our athletic department, it showcases for us that we have a lot to prove in terms of what we can do here. We're first class in everything that we do. But we have to prove that every night we go out and compete and we invite people into our arena for games. Um, but I'm excited for our guys. I mean, even the guys that came over from the previous staff, I think they have a lot they need to prove because in the end of the day, everything that we do is defined by winning. Um, and we're working towards that. You know, I think this is we're building something special, but we're still building. So we have some good days. Um, then we have some bad days. We got to have more, more good days than bad and, and be consistent in everything we're doing on the floor. Um, and I think that's part of the growth opportunity for us. Azar. Hey, Coach, how's it going? What's up, man? Um, hey, I was wondering, to piggyback off that question, um, I mean, how do you prefer? Do you prefer to be the underdog that nobody sees you coming or... I mean, how much of an advantage does it give you? And how much do you prefer it? Uh, you know, I, I don't know what advantage it gives us, but I don't really worry about it, to be honest, because I'm just mm -hmm. focused on what we're trying to do. I mean, I, I got to focus on the practice plan that we have and the things that we have coming up and a scrimmage we have going on. All that other stuff will take care of itself. Um, you know, the, the rankings that exist today, they mean nothing in March. I mean, you got to prove that you are either the seventh place team or the first place team. So I just want to get lost in that process. Um, it's the same thing that, you know, I, I tell our guys um, right before we got on this call, I sent them a video um, and it just really talks about, you know, getting lost in the process and focusing on the process and what happened before for the two guys and Paul Newman and Dre Perry that had a chance to play in the NCAA tournament at their respective programs. It now means nothing because everything that defines who they are moving forward is what they do here at U Albany, And that's all we really focus on. So the rankings, uh, is it motivation? Maybe a little bit you know, maybe a little bit, but um, at the end, of the end of the day, the motivation really comes from the journey that we're on and the opportunity we have in front of us. To piggyback off the, uh, to continue the second part of my question, um, and I spoke to a few of the coaches yesterday um, on the women's side. There seems to be, um, especially with the American East, they talk about diversity and change, and they kind of led by example. If you look on at least the women's side, there's three or four um, African-American head coaches and um, clearly there's you, um, they seem to be, you know, taking that lead. If you could just talk about the representation and how do you feel about the diversity that's clearly in the conference that they're showcasing? Yeah, I think it's great, you know, to see, um, 
you know, Binghamton and Albany, you know, create opportunities, you know, for minorities for leadership. <clears throat> Great. Um, I think if you look at college basketball as a whole, you know, I, I've seen more minorities get opportunities for leadership and head coaching positions, which is terrific. Um, I think there's been a lot of work in terms of just showcasing, hey, minorities have an opportunity to lead and they can be really good leaders on their campuses. When you think about building quality programs, having teams that are prepared to win, impacting communities, graduating kids. Um, I do think, you know, when you talk about the pressures of being a head coach, you know, one of the things for me is, you know, a big pressure for me is just making sure I'm successful. So that way other guys that look like me, friends I have in this business, have opportunities to become head coaches moving forward. And their opportunities will come from the success that we're able to have, if it's me or if it's Kyle Neptune at Fordham, um, Ben Johnson at Minnesota, you know, the, the, the better work that we can do creates more opportunities for those guys moving forward. And it's obviously, you know, happened um, in the past with Shaka Smart's been able to accomplish, guys like Mike Boynton, what they've been able to accomplish, uh, Laval Jordan, you know, at Butler, what he's been able to accomplish, that opens the doors for more opportunities for guys that look like us. Other questions for Dwayne? I'll chime in here. How you doing, Coach? What's going on, man? Sam Schwartz, America East. Uh, uh, I guess just in terms of, you know, you, you mentioned some of the guys you brought in here. There's only a few faces from the last year on this team. So can you just talk about how you were able to um, not build this team from scratch, but put your own stamp on it and, and add the players that you have now? Yeah, when, when we got the staff here, um, you know, I'm very fortunate for the group of guys that I have. Um, on our staff. I think we have a great staff. Um, I've been fortunate to be a part of really strong staffs at other institutions. And I think we have one of the best, you know, possible in terms of the personalities and the characters of, of the assistants and the support staff guys. So we tried to put together what we call a hybrid class. Um, that's a mixture of both high school um, graduates and transfers. You know, we were able to get three graduate transfers <clears throat> from very different places. You know, when you look at Temple University, Bucknell, um, and Lock Haven University for Matt Cerruti. And then, you know, we were able to get Gerald Drumgool, who, you know, has uh, multiple years of eligibility, ACC level player, you know, City Rocks player here in the region. Um, we felt really strongly about that. And then I think our four freshmen are guys that are gonna be able to impact our program at different points in their careers, but I think they can be part of winning. You know, when you look at what winners are, you know, how they get on the floor, how they engage on campus, how they go about their studies and their work. I'm really excited about those guys. And then the six guys decided to stay, I, I think, in the spring. When we got going, we started talking about how we do things, how we approach development, how we approach building our program. They fell in love with it. And I think from then, they found a, another level of confidence. I think they found another level of play in them. Um, you know, just looking at Trey Hutchinson, I think, you know, he found the confidence that he had when he was a freshman. He's going back into that uh, level of a player. He can be a really impactful kid for us. Uh, I think Will Amika, Jamel Horton, those two guys have worked really, really hard um, with Hamlet Tibbs and, and Matt Griffin because they're guard perimeter players. And I think it's it's unlocked another level of talent for them. And I'm excited for these guys to get on the floor. Um, again, we have a lot to prove, and I, I'm hoping that we can get a chip on our shoulder, regardless if it's an America East opponent or – you know, another game, Towson, LaSalle, whoever it is, you know, I want our guys ready to compete at the highest level possible because in the end of the day, you know, that's what's going to come down to how tough we are, how competitive we are. I've been asking this one of, of uh, all the coaches, but I know obviously it's your first year, but you talked about the buy-in from the community <laughs> and I know what that program means to that, to that community. Um, and obviously last year, not being able to play in front of fans, both in our league and really across the country. Uh, what's it going to mean for you guys to play in front of your fans this year and the excitement that's going to be in Tefki Arena uh, that wasn't there last year? Yeah, I think it's going to mean everything, you know, for not only us, but for the community. You know, we had a uh, purple and gold scrimmage this past weekend. And just when our kids walked out and saw some fans out there, I thought it made them a little nervous. But then I think it got them really excited because, you know, they're, they're, they understand the appreciation that exists for our program and for them as individuals. Um, but for this community, I think college basketball is and has to be such a big part of it. Um, you know, I think we have a unique opportunity here in the future to play Siena. And I think that 
creates a really unique, engaging experience here in the capital region to have, you know, two different sides cheering, going crazy, you get bars filled, you get people, you know, wearing their Albany shirts, their Sienna hats, whatever it is, but you get a chance to represent yourself and have bragging rights. That's cool. Um, I think when you look at our, our game schedule, you know, you, you're bringing uh, Harvard in here uh, with Tommy Emmerker has an amazing program, had high level success, bring Towson in here, really good college basketball team. We got some games that people should be excited about um, that they can come in here and prove how great of fans they can be and how great of an appreciation they have for college basketball. And I think that's the challenge, you know, I throw back to people is, um, do we want to have a great program and win games? Yes. But I do challenge them to make sure that they're ready to come in and support us, regardless of the weather, you know, regardless of whatever circumstances there is, to be a really good college basketball program. And if we're going to try to go after some of the programs in the league that have had success, you know, their fans don't waver. They show up every single night, and that's the kind of environment that we're hoping to have here, that people come in and say, like, man, they pack it in, they play hard. It's a hard place to go there and, and compete and try to get a win because there's a consistency on the floor and a consistency in the crowd. Well, thanks, Coach. Uh, good luck as you get ready for the season, and we'll see you down the road. Thank you. You guys be good.